symbolic. I, I'll just share with you some of my opinion on this quickly. Now, this is a kind of 30 minute presentation. I'll make it short 10 15 minutes. But this is the status. I took this data from Kumara uh, Guru Bari, who is here. Uh, it's a terrific librarian we have in Madurai. I saw, know her for the last uh, 25 years now. And this is the status in the last uh, 15 years, right? 2003 to 2018. So many people have done thesis or dissertation or whatever you want to call. How many of them were converted into publication? Not even a, a tip of iceberg, not even 5 percent, okay? So what happens to all this work? You call it as research work, you do with a background, you know, you have undergone a research methodology workshop, you have been guided by somebody, you have wasted so much of time in that and I told, I tell my uh, DNB candidates who are here, once I went to the national board office to correct paper, theory paper, so because we are committed to do once in a while, so I was correcting the paper and the table was shaking. I said, why is it shaking? Huh? Because it was a difficult office to maneuver anything. If you must push something, you will have to push on another person who is correcting on that side. So, you have to be very careful. So, I asked the uh, one of the helper who was coming, going up and down, serving chai, can you just uh, check this, this table? Now, he immediately ran. Huh? You know what he got? He got one more thesis book and put it on. <laughs> and now he said, sir, it is not going to shake, correct. Then I uh, uh, put my head down, I saw already there was two theses and there is a third one, okay? So if you are going to do dissertation which is going to support benches, it is up to you, it is up to you. But if you take that real interest and say that I am going to give an evidence for somebody to practice tomorrow, then you are going to stay always. That means if you are going to publish it, in a good journal, it is going to stay always. Otherwise, think Kumara Gurubari is going to have a copy in the library. The National Board of Office is going to have a copy. <laughs> now, now they have a better office and better tables. Anyway, this this is being recorded also. I have to be careful. <laughs> well, I didn't put in the first part. <laughs> but anyway, see, this is the condition of uh, the present status. So. So, this is a disclaimer. See, I am not an expert. So, Josh who is sitting here, uh, my colleagues Dr. Kavita, Jay Gayatri, Dr. Subita who has come from Jipa, they are all experts in this. I had no knowledge. You know, even my community medicine was like you, mean, median, mode. What is this subject for? Huh? <laughs> Why do you have to read this? What are we doing with this subject? Forensic medicine, community medicine. Now, I was passing time like that. But, uh, you have to keep in mind that research is not only for scientists. Okay, just see the titles of these topics. PECO versus SICS in white cataract, in brown and black cataract, in lens induced glaucomas, end of thalmitis in 42,000 consecutive cases, cases in Pondicherry. Outcomes of high volume cataract surgery. This article I, I was telling you, it was published way back in BJO. The economic cost of cataract surgery, comparing three techniques which were popular way back in 96, 97, ECC, SICS and FACO. See, if you, if you see all these titles, now whenever I wanted to pursue something on that, they'll say, it's already done, it's already so many work is done. What are you going to do? SICS is everybody is doing in this country. This is I am talking about 97, 98, 99, 2000, all these work. What are you going to do? You are more discouraged than even encouraged to do some work like this. But I went into evidence, there was no evidence. Everybody says it is good for brown cataract, it is good for phacolytic, it is good for phacomorphic. Where is the evidence? Then I questioned myself, there is no evidence. Even now if you want to do any work on this, you can't do a work without citing this work, without going through this review. So, this is how some of the evidences are even now. I'm just highlighting that, you may think there will be a lot of evidence, but there is minimal evidence on so many things which you consider as simple here or is happening here. 
It's day in and day out here. But there is no evidence. So why do research? No? Mainly to contribute your knowledge and share your observations. No? You would have observed something which, which makes your job much simpler than uh, what it was before. It is our responsibility to share the observations. So these are the top 10 reasons no, why one should do research. It, this is the first most important part of it, no, which is difficult to understand but it is so important because you have the opportunity and you are committed to do that. It is your commitment. You cannot just brush off and say, no, I have come to non-surgery, I am doing good surgery, I am happy with my practice. There are so many things which you would have observed during your learning and practice. And if it is going to make somebody else's practice better, then it is our moral responsibility. So that is what now I am trying to put up here. So we have a lot of opportunity to make a lot of meaningful observations. Like the technique which I recently shared with you, you know, during my grand rounds talk on innovation. So I always found cortex removal after femto laser a nightmare. No, you can remove the nucleus, the pupil is not really good as in a FACO. And then you have a cortex which gets literally shaven by the laser and you do not have those an anterior fibers to pull the cortex comfortably. I used to do cortex wash in a FACO case just like that, like a flash. But this was like bothering me until I saw an observation, a technique which was published later also. But this observation was presented as a video in ACRS 2018 called second wave. Yeah, what a simple idea. You all do first wave hydro dissection before cataract. But he said you have to do a second wave after removing the nucleus. When your cortex and epinucleus is there, you do a second wave and then you do an aspiration, it makes it easier. It made my job easier after that. So simple observations like that make a lot of big difference to people who are going to practice tomorrow. And many researchers will not have a lab like this. Now what we have in this country, you know, the volume of patients, the richness of knowledge which we have and also the technology support which we have. Nowhere else they will have this. And what a waste of experience, you know, if we do not collectively try to lab learn and share our discoveries. So these are some of the publications I just wanted to highlight. There are many more like that, but mostly from here, 6,328 consecutive patients. Who will have a data like this? No? Inviting a sibling and studying for angle closure. Where else can we do? It's very difficult to do in your, if you ask, Josh, can you bring your sibling? He'll say, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know which state he is. Now only he moved from Cleveland to Ohio. Let me let me think about it. It's it's not easy to do some work which you can do here. Here you can call somebody no, and say your sibling has got glaucoma. Please come for examination. You can still do that. It's still possible. Okay. There is one study which my dad Mo Mohideen did. It's a family of 160. Okay, 35 at glaucoma in a village called Kyle Putnam near Tirnal Valley. They all come once in a year from everywhere across the globe. They live across the globe. So this family of 150 people have 35 glaucoma. So they assembled all the 150 and one day they did examine to do a genetic study. Where else is this is possible? I don't think anywhere else it is possible to do work like this. You have hell a lot of ulcers to work like this. You know, in spite of being a developing world, Every other day, you get 10 ulcers here, new case, long term reduction, no? where you can follow these patients, 8 years, 9 years, 10 years, it is still possible. No? If you do a, a good work, you, you properly recruit these patients, you follow them with the geographical information system, you can follow these patients for 8, 9, 10 years. Where can you do this? Josh says, nowhere in the world you can do this. And now, See, this is the published, uh, this is accepted article. 2 million consecutive cataract surgeries. What is your endophthalmitis? The whole world talks about this work. 2 in 10,000, 
now decrease from 0 0.8 0 0.08 to 0 0.02 now which is 8 in 10,000 to 2 in 10,000 where can you give an evidence like this so when you want to share it's not only through randomized trials now which is strictly done it's all it's very important but you can also share through simple case reports case series even sometimes letters to editors will be sufficient to make some meaningful difference so this is an observation which uh, dr kavita did some time back she said i see uh, smallpox cases with scars and then they have a peculiar iris lesion and then they have glaucomas we saw a series of two three patients in the in a matter of two to three years and then when you look into evidence there are only two publications both from india one is by dr ratnam Priya's mother. The another is by Dr. Shukla, another alum, alumni's mother, Dhananjay Shukla's father. And they published this as vitiligo iridis in smallpox. How many years back? 20 years back, 40 years back. Since then, for the, everybody forgot this condition. You know, whenever they saw it, maybe they will review and see vitiligo iridis. But when the patients, these smallpox patients, when they are turning 60, 70, they were developing a open angle glaucoma. Somewhere the trabeculum was damaged by this pigments or whatever. Now, over the years, they are developing glaucoma. So, this is an observation which was published. So, whenever we see a vitiligo iridis, I think we should keep in mind that they can develop more glaucoma tomorrow like angle recession. So, you can warn them. Fortunately, we don't have smallpox, but still you may see the patients who were having smallpox 50, 60 years back when it was eradicated. This is a small observation which my uh, uh, good... Uh, fellow and he was a consultant with us, Dr. Manas was telling. Now people mark with ink and then it disappears when you do surgery for toric eye wound. And then even if you want to rotate the patient again, you have to go and remark it. So he, he came up with a brilliant idea of doing a stromal function. So that he was saying the stain not only stays during that day, it also stays for 48 hours so that if you want to re-rotate, you don't have to go back and mark again on an operated eye. I said, it's a brilliant idea. He said, what is that, sir? I think this. And you publish it. Now it's an evidence. So, so many people follow this of stromal puncture for toric marking. So, these are things which may look simple for you, but it may make a meaningful difference for people. Since many of you are using, you know, a vacuum holder. Somebody made this observation. You now, Dr. Seema and our... Uh, technician. So, they said, now we are able to hold the eye using a vacuum holder which is used in refractive surgery. Then you people should know about this. So, last, uh, 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 before last ASCRS, your senior resident you now sent me an email saying that we want a vacuum holder for Kellogg. After seeing this publication, then we sent a couple of vacuum holders with Dr. Satish who went to ACRS. So like that, there are several places where they are using this vacuum holder now. So these are simple things. You, know, you can either market it tomorrow or whatever it is, but you have done that observation, you have used it, and then you share it with a wider audience. And this is very important. This is how we have relationship with several people. Even Josh has come for this kind of relationship. You can build relationship and collaborations once you start working on a research project and this will indirectly help you now it will bring in funding it will bring in uh, support staff and all that and then you can make your progress comfortably so i just want to acknowledge the list goes on uh, i had to restrict at some point no these are the issues now whenever we want to do study even a thesis who is going to fund it but i'll tell you you have again a hell of a lot of opportunity but you have to keep be on the lookout. You ask people like uh, Kumar Gurubari now who can give you a list of opportunity for you to find suitable grants, ICMR, DC, uh, the, um, the, the grants, DPT grants. There are so many, DPT, uh, the biotechnology grants. There are so many grants which are available. And even within ophthalmology, there are so many grants. 
ASCRS every year gives foundation gives research grants. I got once that research grant for doing that uh, FACO in white cat track versus small incision. There are so many things which are available, you know, and then you have to also, once you do this kind of work, you know, you know how to write a grant proposal. And it is always the story which I see, you know, which came first, the chick or the egg. You need a good CV to raise a grant. At the same time, you know, if you want a, a good grant, you should have a good CV, right? So, if you want to build a CV, initially you have to write or do some work like case reports, case series, small work here, there. Then you have some good CV and then if you write a grant, you are going to get. And also with these grants, you know, you can get a lot of useful equipments which you normally can't buy for patient care or for the institute. So, this like this, there are several foundations offering. Hmm? So, I say beg, steal, borrow, okay. <laughs> So once you do all this, now you have a good abstract and then automatically all this opportunity comes. Just now I saw WOC 2020 yesterday release, you know, to submit your paper and they were travel ground, they were giving you 2000 dollars, low middle income country. I went and checked, India is still there in the low middle income country. <laughs> so you are still eligible. Huh? Few years back they had removed the eligibility and now I think they brought the eligibility back to us. No, no, I'm just telling you, I, I got three WOC grants. The fourth one, Kavita got. I said, you, you try this time. Hmm? To go to Sydney, to go to Singapore, and to go to Vienna once. Okay, two WGC grants. And you have seen uh, some of our colleagues, Dr. Annamalai, Pawan, many of them got grants to attend APA, CRS, and all that. See, the opportunities are there, but if you do a good research work, you have a good abstract, then your opportunity doubles there. No, because you have an abstract to submit and then you apply for the grant and then you go for these meetings and there you meet more people. There you get more collaborations. So, once all this happens, I am sure you can get a strong CV. No, now I can say I have 75 publications. No, people like uh, Josh can say, just cross century, right? Yes. Many years back. <laughs> so, so once you have this, automatically you are eligible for a lot of other things. To getting grants, to to to, to get new partners to do good work. You no, know? and then uh, the the last important thing. This is one is now driving people, right, to do research. <laughs> the Medical Council of India guidelines. This is what we were discussing the last week also with that professor. Because these guidelines is there, now people are looking into shortcuts to get publication. No, paying some X amount of dollars to a Russian company and it came recently, a couple of days back in Hindu, it was a big article. So, how many predatory journals are there? How many good journals also take money to publish? There are some several Indian journals also in that list. It has come now and it is going to become a big kind of a, uh, a, 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 a story which is going to kind of unfold now in the next uh, maybe few months. So, now people want publication. No? to sustain their service in medical colleges or to get promotion from one level to the other level. So, if you do automatically you can get. So, even when the TNMC uh, credit scores, you know, all these credit scores came, some of the people who are doing good research and publications are not bothered at all because you have three publications, you already get the 30 points in that year. So, you do not have to worry about going to a conference or getting a certificate or uploading anything. Your three articles is well and good, okay. So, this is another incentive which has been mandatory by the government and now this time I think national board is mandatory to attend a research methodology workshop and also to take a test now. Before they said only attend, but now they are going to test your knowledge after you attend. So, all this automatically happens, all the rest of it automatically happens. You get opportunity for awards, you get opportunity to write chapters and only if you do some work, I am sure people would invite you to talk about because you become an authority in that area. I will tell if there is anywhere, anything happening on leptospirosis, people will call only Dr. Ratna because she is an authority in leptospirosis and traumatoid related conditions. For many years, we were saying it is a tuberculum conglomerate, no, condition. Everything they give ATT, no, for a 
for a mushroom looking lesion in the anterior chamber. Dr. Ratnam was bothered about it. He said uh, it's, it's, it's not tuberculosis, it's not related to tuberculosis. They went and hunted and then it's found out it's from a trematode. And people taking bath in a particular river, pond are getting this. For many years, people were thinking it's because of tuberculosis and treating with ATT in India. So you can change the whole ball game. And now any work related to that, people cannot quote without quoting her name. Or people have to invite. Only if she says, no, no, I'm not... I'm not able to attend, then they can invite somebody else. So I'll tell you this five, four, five, or seven, eight chapter, I mean publications in small incision has got me an opportunity to write at least ten different chapters for big textbooks. Okay, including trap with SICS and all that. Because whenever they go, they want to give to somebody who's given the evidence. They can't just give to somebody who knows a technique. So that is where all this makes a difference. At the end of the day, no, this is more important. I am sure once your article is there on the press and once you see the name on your notice board, right, you, you have a, you feel satisfied. You have done something good. You may or may not change the practice pattern, but if you are going, to, this is a step towards changing a practice, practice pattern in the future. This is like a, one of the step you are going to take and this is going to be the initial and a very important step. And we have seen that happening. You know, like institutes saying we are introducing a family screening model like what you are doing here after seeing your work. Somebody says, no, we are using your vacuum holder after seeing what you have done. Somebody says, no, we have changed our practice pattern to uh, an antifungal drug after seeing your practice. The whole uh, NHS changed the practice pattern after seeing our work. So, these are things which happens as you go on doing. But the most important part is my 10th point. Mm, it's not easy. It's not easy to publish. Okay. It may be easy to do some case reports, case series here and there. But once you come to randomized trial and working on it perfectly, you know, working with your biostatistician, having the right uh, manuscript submitted and then getting it published, it's not easy. But you have to be perseverant. Okay. So, you may there is one article I can tell you, visual experience during FACO trabeculectomy, rejected in 13 journals and finally accepted in OSLI. It is also a good journal, but we kept trying. So, you have to be perseverant in some work like that, but if it is half cooked or half baked, I am sure it will be very difficult to get it published, but still you have to work on it from the beginning and that is what basically what this research methodology is going, workshop is going to prepare you for. So, if somebody else publishes that work, then you have lost the game, okay. So, either you publish or perish. So, this was my end of the day presentation, but I make it sh short here, okay. So, so this uh, workshop is very well designed. If you see the program, no, it is perfectly designed for the day and uh, uh, it's a great privilege for me to introduce uh, Josh uh, from uh, University of Michigan, Kellogg Eye Institute. Uh, at a very, I mean, he, he has worked with several excellent mentors, including uh, David Friedman and uh, Paul Lee, uh, David Musk, and so many other people at Kellogg and uh, Johns Hopkins. And at a very young age, now he is uh, heading the Department of Research in uh, Kellogg Eye Institute, and he's. Uh, critically helping us to get a uh, NIH grant uh, called D43 grant for training Arvind the uh, uh, clinician scientists, converting clinicians into scientists uh, in several programs including a six month, one year, two year program. So, he is helping us to get that grant uh, from NIH and uh, he, he is also associated with several collaborative works not only in Pondicherry but also in Madurai, Coimbatore and in other centers. And uh, it, it's a very privilege to have you, Josh, today. And uh, we are looking forward for uh, future vis visits to Pondicherry. And uh, we have uh, Dr. Subita. So she's a, a, a teaching faculty, and she's from the Department of Community Medicine in uh, our premier institute, Jawaharlal Nehru Postgraduate Medical Education and Research, JIPMER. And she's been teaching uh, biostatistics and also the basics of uh, research to the Jipmer residents and 
people who walk into that department and we are uh, privileged to have you madam and we'll have a uh, few talks over teleconference one is uh, by our colleague dr ashok from tirupati who has done his uh, uh, master of public health in johns hopkins and uh, he's also a well uh, renowned researcher internally and we also have our own alumni whom you all know dr sen gupta who's running an academy called sen gupta academy and he's been kind of you know his, his mission is to bring quality research into this country especially in, in, in infuse that kind of infection into the youngsters so he's got an academy and uh, it's a popular academy now there are more than uh, 500 people who have registered for the online classes and uh, they are undergoing these classes to do quality work so with this uh, introduction you now i uh, will 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 open this program mm. and i i would like to appreciate and uh, thank dr kavita and uh, jay gayatri for organizing this excellent uh, session and i'm sure in the future you will have more and more registrations once this message goes out thank you